I took this old and moldy dragon fruit, placed it in a terracotta pot filled with soil so that I could see if I could grow a hundred baby dragon fruit cactus friends. Now normally we'd probably throw it away, but becoming a mother is way better than disposing of old and moldy fruit. And of course, I wouldn't make you wait because it's been one full year and we actually got a hundred baby dragons. This is a tale of triumph. Story of accomplishment. A chronicle of success. A legend of progress. So, it all started three weeks after planting that full moldy dragon fruit in the soil. When I planted it, I also added some perlite and vermiculite to the garden soil in the pot. That just helps allow the soil to breathe and it provides good aeration so our children can grow. Three weeks passed. Every morning I would go out to the garden. In fact, I would sprint. Religiously checking on our babies. One morning, I entered the garden to see this. We got one baby dragon growing. Success. I was so pumped. I was convinced we were going to have a full-blown desert outside our front door. But I was indeed quite confused because there are hundreds, if not thousands, of small, black, edible, crunchy seeds in a dragon fruit like the one that we planted. And as determined as I was to grow a hundred baby dragons, for some reason only one baby was growing and it wasn't getting very big. So you know what I had to do. I got another old and moldy dragon fruit to plant in soil. In fact, I got two of them. One purple and one white fleshed. I added those straight back to the soil where we were growing our one baby dragon. And as I got ready to add them to the soil, this terracotta pot became a whole ecosystem. There were some worms, some tiny bugs, those really freaked me out. But I figured the cycle of life will allow my little babies to grow. If this was me this year, you already know we would have taken those worms and created a mean, mean compost bin that collected the worm poop to make the soil even more perfect. But back then, I wasn't as experienced of a plant mother as I am now. So I just left the worms to chill in the soil with the baby dragons. Now we had four pieces of dragon fruit ready to go. I covered them with soil and I waited another four weeks. This time. What happened was absolutely astonishing. All right, let me tell you. A hundred baby dragons were growing. I was so excited, but it was raining a lot. So the soil was pretty damp. And I guess that meant that it was a very tasty. Because each day I went to check on our baby dragons, there seemed to be what looked like a hole in the soil getting bigger and bigger as the days passed. So much so that I realized that must not be the worms. It must be the squirrels. Some of the baby dragons were even gone. And if you don't already know, on this channel, we have a rodent problem. And I figured it was the squirrels coming and feasting on my babies for their families of 17. Because whenever you see one squirrel, there's like 20. At first, I wasn't really sure what to do. So I left it because I figured the cacti would grow their first little hairs, which are in fact quite spiky. So I figured maybe the spikes would help ward off the rodents. And at first it was doing really well. The babies were starting to grow up. But that was a mistake. I shouldn't have left it. Because one of the days I woke up to find the holes were even deeper and a lot of our baby dragons were gone. Even though I did thank the plant gods for leaving us with some of our children, I got to work to deter these rodents so that we could be successful and grow these a hundred baby dragons. Okay. I got some more soil. I filled in the holes and I even added some survival sticks, which are really just chicken souvlaki sticks that I put in the soil so the sharp edges of the sticks could be used to help scare off these squirrels. And guess what? Our baby dragons were doing well again. <laughs> but a few days later, I went to check on them and I guess those babies are truly tasty because most of them were in fact gone. You know that this year I learned from my mistakes and we're gonna deter those squirrels with mesh netting, greenhouses, garden boxes, and prickly railings. But you probably still already know what I had to do. I scrummaged in the soil for the remaining children and I rehoused them to bring them inside because I was determined as heckin' to grow these things and hundreds of them. And plus it was getting pretty cold outside so at this point we had to bring them inside anyway if we wanted them to survive because we are in Canada and the winters are very harsh. I repotted them and I let them sit inside my grow box for a few months and this is what they started to grow into. I was very excited. But these things are very hard to keep alive. They're cacti, so they hold water in their leaves, and you have to be sure not to overwater these. I didn't even overwater them, and they were slowly but surely shrinking up like a little fruit going rotten. But you know me. I was determined as a heckin. So I took these things and I repotted them. I added the little seedlings to two different grow boxes, and I gave them some nutrients, some kelp, some extra love. I even talked to them to give them energy, and they actually started to grow back really big. Y'all know it's because I was talking to them. And these ones were in fact bigger than the other ones I planted and they were ready to be repotted into a new pot. So I did that when they outgrew the grow box. And now the other ones were smaller babies and they were taking a little bit longer to grow. This was basically the five month progression 
of the second grow box dragon fruit that we tried to save and it was doing really well. Not all of them survived, but hey, it's a tough world out there. It seemed like a few were coming back from the dead. So like the others, I took it out of the grow box and I got ready to separate them into their own individual pots. They were looking really good for a few weeks. As time passed, they seemed to be shrinking like the other ones. And at this point, I didn't know what to do. I wasn't overwatering them. They were outside and had lots of sun. I was just confused. But I do not give up. And the initial dragon fruit that we planted in the pot was also shrinking up. I don't know, guys. But for some reason, I still wasn't happy. I really wanted 100 baby dragons that would grow actual dragon fruit. So you know what I had to do. I got an old and moldy yellow dragon fruit. It wasn't that old and moldy. But we got to work this time. Since I learned so much from the time before, I figured this time it's going to work really well. So I got my handy dandy utensil and I pricked the seeds out. I got them on a piece of damp paper towel in orderly fashion to germinate. Not Germany, but Germany. And soon enough, it grew some tails and it was ready to be planted in soil. I got a pot of soil, added some survival sticks that we all know and love, and planted the germinated seeds right inside. The yellow dragon fruits were growing so well, they were ready to be repotted and I was pumped. They were growing way faster than the purple ones. And the little seeds that germinated were a lot thicker. Girthy. So I separated them and got them each in a new pot. And a few more months passed. They were still thriving. And at this point, I had to bring them inside. But I had to make sure there were no bugs in the soil. So I got some dish soap. I diluted that in water. I soaked the roots so we didn't bring any pests inside. I do this with all the plants I bring inside. And you should too, so you repel bugs. I'm already growing hornworms and mealworms and silkworms. So we don't need more pests because right now they're controlled. Anywho. I had to prick some cactus out of my fingers as well because they got stuck after touching and it was kind of fun not gonna lie but any sudden movement it was like a jolt through my whole body but i got some cactus soil ready and i completed the mission now those babies are thriving and hopefully soon they're gonna grow some dragon fruits i don't really know how long that takes but i'll see you in 13 years however if you know anything about me i persevere and i try what's difficult and i'm not often happy with the results so after we did this i low-key got a dragon fruit obsession and i got an idea i figured maybe we can try to be creative and try growing a unique dragon fruit plant from the seeds inside of one of my drinks a dragon fruit pinkity drinkity so I ran to the shop I sprinted in fact we're getting used to this I removed all the seeds from the drink got them on a piece of damp paper towel and waited some weeks now I am aware that these seeds are freeze-dried so there's a very low chance that they will grow but if we did this with the kiwi drink and we grew an actual kiwi plant and we try what's difficult then surely we can grow a dragon fruit cactus too there was actually some growth taking place in these little dragon fruit dehydrated seeds and I was in shock because I didn't realize this would be a thing. And we would grow a dragon fruit cactus from our drinks. But as the days went on, it did seem to shrink up a bit and it died. I'm very sorry. But I was still happy that I tried this because I now have a solid kiwi plant from my drink. And we're going to try this again until we grow a dragon fruit plant from our drink. So make sure to stay tuned on this one. By the way, if you want an easier way to extract your dragon fruit seeds along the way, I learned if you're doing it the traditional way, don't spend too much time picking out the seeds with your bare hands. Instead, just grab your dragon dragon fruit and a paper towel cut a piece of your dragon fruit and pat the fruit down on the paper towel that will remove a lot of your seeds and then you can just spritz the paper towel with water and grow your seeds without spending the two hours picking them off or you can be like me and do that because it's a little bit more fun in orderly fashion but anywho i had to taste this dragon fruit and then give some to everybody in the house and this guy he was working on the house he didn't think it tasted like much well, the white really one good. doesn't but the yellow and the purple ones are much sweeter so try those if you're eating dragon fruit but along the way i did learn something else that, that there are dragon fruits that are actually called apple cacti and they have a smooth surface on the outside. They're often found in South America, but I was lucky enough to find one at a fruit market. So naturally, I had to open it for the first time and taste it to see what this buzz was all about. Because of course, we all know that I love dragon fruits. I got an obsession. It was pretty cool though, and it tasted really good. I will not lie. But this was honestly just a cherry on top for a year's worth of hard work growing 100 baby dragons. So that, my friends, is the story of how one person love for dragon fruits led them on a wild adventure. I dared to take on the challenge of growing not one, not ten, but a hundred baby dragons to call our own, and what a journey it was. We started out with two old and moldy purple dragon fruits, one old and moldy yellow dragon fruit, one dragon fruit pinkity drinkity with the dehydrated seeds that we tried to grow, and a whole lot of dragon babies we now have as our children. That we quite literally birthed ourselves, okay? With just a little more time, they're gonna grow 
grow up. They're gonna sprout. They're gonna grow real fruit. And just so you know, dragon fruit plants get pollinated by nocturnal creatures on only one night of every summer. And after that one night, all the fruits sprout up, so we gotta make sure we're ready for that one night of the summer. Right now, I'm getting ready to bring these plants back outside since summer is now here in Canada. So don't forget to come back for updates on our dragon fruit progress. And remember, try what's difficult because it's all trial and error. Where will this journey take us next? Eating the dragon fruits that we grow. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to follow. Don't forget to subscribe. And know that I believe in you as a plant parent and I love you. I'll see you next week.